Hello Dino Peeps, the first guide of the new year is here and this time we are looking at the survival of the fittest, the battle royale mode of ARK that has received a complete overhaul. The overhaul also includes completely new game mechanics and because they are not so intuitive at first, here is this guide for you. The survival of the fittest or TSOTF is Studio Wildcard's latest highlight in the ARK series. This battle royale game is a fresh and updated version of the new game mode originally discontinued in 2016. TSOTF TF was revived on the 23rd of December 2022 and initially featured 4-man and solo servers. It now also features dual servers and several patches and balance updates. In this guide, I will show you how TSOTF works and how to play it. Keep in mind that the game meta is currently constantly changing due to regular balance updates, so it may not be worth getting deeper into tactics just yet. However, if you are new to TSOTF, this guide will teach you how to play. After starting your game, you will need to join a server. Currently, the game does not have matchmaking or game lobbies like other games, but instead you join a server that is in lobby mode and you wait with other players for the game to begin. You have the option to choose between official and unofficial servers. The choice is yours, but it's worth noting that official servers are run by wildcard and tend to fill up more quickly. Unofficial servers are privately run and may have different settings and server sizes than the official servers. It is best to choose a server in your region, but latency isn't as important in TSO compared to the old SOTF or even ARC as the game focuses on dinosaur combat and the AI and area of effect attacks of the dinosaurs can help compensate for desync issues. Press the L key to create a tribe and give it a name. You can also import or paint a tribe flag. Please note that your player name your tribe name, your tribe flag and any pictures you create must comply with the game's terms of service. Servers were randomly checked and players who violate the terms of service will be banned from every wildcard product. If you want to play with friends on a duo or quad server, you must meet in the lobby of a pre-selected server. Just agree on which dino statue you want to meet at and this way you will find each other faster. To invite someone, long press the R key while looking at the player. And to accept an invitation, long press the R key as well. You can customize your characters and your tribe's characters with the scissors and the brush that you spawn with. Once you are in the battle quests, you can open the overview map by pressing the M key. From here you can see where the initial safe zone is and where the three tameable bosses spawn. You can make marks on the map by clicking on a spot with the middle mouse button. It is important to update the marker before jumping as it will not remain until you land. Once the quest is over the accessible part of the map, you can press the space bar to jump out of the quest. You will be equipped with a cinemacrobes that will allow you to glide to your marked spot. In the air, you can already craft spears to be prepared for your enemies when you land. Since you cannot craft weapons except from the spear and except for the ammunition in your inventory, it is important to find and loot drops. The loot drops are divided into different tiers and can be opened by long pressing the R key. You can even open them while sitting on a dino. Once you have landed, look out for the green loot drops as these are already on the ground and they can be looted directly. Higher value loot drops are still in the air, so if you get a bow or a pike early, you can defend yourself against other players and wild animals while you wait for the better drops. If you are playing in a tribe, all players who are near the loot drop will receive the same items and armor as well as weapons. This ensures that all players are equipped equally and encourages teams to stay together during the game. It is important to remember that there are no firearms in TSOTF. The best weapon you can currently get is a compound bow. There are also flamethrowers and rocket launchers in red drops. But the rocket launchers only have one rocket as ammunition and the flamethrowers have a limited amount of ammunition as well. The weapons are equipped automatically and if you get several weapons of the same type, they are all available. To switch between them, open the radial menu where you select them and scroll up and down while holding the mouse pointer over the weapon. Resources are obtained by looting loot drops, killing animals and here it doesn't matter if it's wild or enemy tamed animals. The inventory of your human animals are automatically moved into your inventory as soon as they are killed. To make ammo for your weapons, either press R while holding them or right click the weapon in your menu. The tame mechanic in TSOTF is extremely simplified to achieve a faster pace of play. No matter what animal, you kill it to knock it out first and then you hold R on the animal to claim it. And you use tokens for this. In the game, you have to collect tokens for everything that has to do with animals, taming, leveling up and healing. Taming is done with the tokens and you get them by killing wild animals or tamed animals of other players. You can see how many tokens you have below your minimap in the game. 
tokens are shared with your tribe so it's important to be clear about when you're using them up so make sure that you have a clear communication and make sure that there are enough left for everyone on the team while you can also level up your dinos by killing wildlife it is often better to use additional tokens especially if you want to reach the first level tokens are also used to spawn bosses each boss requires 400 tokens and there can be only one boss per tribe and a total of three bosses per map if you have dinos you do not longer need, you can convert them back into tokens via their radial menu. When you kill enemy animals, you can claim them for yourself and your tribe. With the last big update, you can now even use more tokens to keep the level of the animal. Previously, every dino was reset to tier 0. Creatures can have 4 levels, from 0 to 3. In general, it is better to have a few leveled creatures than many unleveled ones. Large groups of unleveled animals are not a good strategy, at least not right now. For example, a leveled stack can kill an unleveled Rex or Spinosaurus easily. The ability to take over a creature and play as a dino is a new mechanic in TSOTF and it is probably the best change from the old version of SOTF. Both when you are alive and already dead you can take over a creature and play as that creature in the game. When you are alive you stand motionless in the world. However, if you are dead you will be the creature you want to own for the rest of the game. You can even switch creatures if you want to. Possessed creatures have a pinkish blue glow around their head. To take over a creature while you're still alive, select the Possess option in the creature's radial menu. If you're dead, press F to get a list of all players and creatures that are still alive. The creature must be unridden and cannot be carried by another player, for example an otter. Teleport to the creature and press E to take it over. When you press E again, you can leave the creature and switch back to spectator mode to select a new creature. This way you can still help your team even if you die early. Keep in mind however that as a creature you don't get any loot, you can't whistle or tame dinos, but other than that you're just as helpful as a full player. TSOTF has an RTS mode. RTS stands for Real Time Strategy. You start it by pressing V. It gives you an overhead view of your creatures and allows you to control them when they're stuck behind rocks or trees or to guide them around obstacles. This can be especially useful in hectic situations where you need to move your creatures quickly. You can also decide from which direction your creatures attack an opponent, giving you a strategic advantage. It is also easier to skillfully position your creatures one at a time as you do not have to ride and whistle them into position. However, there are some disadvantages to the RTS mode. You are stuck in the RTS view and cannot see what's happening to your player. This can make it difficult to keep track and you are more vulnerable to attacks that require quick reactions. The visible RTS field is also not particularly large, so you can't always make ideal use of it. The controls while explained on the side are not really intuitive and without practice it could take some time getting used to it. I would suggest try the RTS mode and see if you can integrate it in your gameplay. If not, don't worry about it because you can play and win completely without RTS mode. In the drops you will find armor and you will find blood bags to heal yourself. With each drop your current armor is replaced with a better armor of the drop. Your old armor is discarded so you cannot switch back to your old armor. You can have a maximum of 4 blood bags. You use them by pressing 1. Remember that every healing method in the game whenever it's for humans or for dinos is a long term heal and not an instant heal so plan ahead and don't heal too late. Armor in TSOTF works a little bit different than in ARC. Armor is essentially an extension to your hit points and you only take damage once your armor is broken. The Ring of Death is a mechanism that forces players to get closer together as the game progresses. The initial first big ring is displayed on the map once you are in the battle quads. This allows you to plan whether you take a risky leap far out to claim a boss for example or you stay inside the ring to play a relaxed round without stressing about the ring first. After a while the game reports that the ring is moving. This means that the blue ring of death is slowly approaching the white safe ring. If you are outside the white ring you must hurry to get inside the ring. While the blue ring is slow enough that you can catch up with it and outrun it with your player, some creatures are not able to run away from it that quickly. When you are in the blue death zone you take tick damage that slowly wears away your armor and then your hit points. As soon as the blue ring reaches the white border a new white ring will appear on the map representing the new safe zone for you and so it continues. In the very last zone there will be no more white ring and the blue ring will shrink to a tiny circle forcing all players to stand close together and not play passively. And as in every battle royale game you want to be the last player or the last tribe alive. If you can do that you are the winner. Unlike the old SOTF you also now have to make sure that you kill any creature that the other tribes have tamed. 
A possessed compi or true dawn hiding, for example, has already helped some players to reach a good position even though their whole team died before. I hope this little guide has helped you to understand how the new TSOTF works. If you have any more questions or suggestions to the game, then please let me know in the comments. And other than that, I wish you have successful rounds and you win your rounds and I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.